Hello, this is Stephen Metcalf. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today we begin a new teaching series, How to Walk in the Spirit. I know you and I are going to be blessed. It is the question of almost everybody that I know, Christian. How do you walk in the Spirit? How does one actually walk in the Spirit? Well, let's begin right away. What is walking in the Spirit? Walking in the Spirit is nothing other than walking in God. The Bible says um, in the book of John chapter 1 verses 4, the Bible says, In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. It's John chapter 1 verses 4. In Him, in Jesus, was life, and the life was the light of men. So walking in the Spirit is walking in the Lord. And it is something that you and I are looking forward to. It is something that you and I actually do. Walking in the Spirit is not walking in some kind of realm. Walking in the Spirit is not walking in some kind of atmosphere. Walking in the Spirit is walking in the Lord Jesus. The Bible also says in John chapter 1, verse 16, the Bible says, Of His fullness have we all received grace for grace. So walking in the Spirit is walking in the fullness of God. You know, in the fullness of His grace, in the fullness of His love, in the fullness of His person. So let's just put that aside and understand it and just square it away and know that walking in the Spirit is walking in the fullness of God. And I know that you and I look forward to it. You and I anticipate this. And it is our desire to walk in the fullness of the anointing, to walk in the fullness of God's presence, to walk in the fullness of God himself, his person, his expressions. And these are things that you and I look forward to each and every day. So let's begin today understanding how do we walk in the Spirit now that we've understood what is walking in the Spirit. It's nothing other than just walking in the Lord and walking in step with Him and making sure that you and I are one and the same with God in everything we do. You know the Bible says, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, O God, my strength and my Redeemer. That was David's prayer. And just looking back at what David said, he desired a walk in the Spirit. He desired a walk with God that was intimate and nothing unlike anything he had. So today we shall tackle the first thing about walking in the Spirit, which is having a word life. The necessity of walking in the Spirit is having a word life. Let's just begin the book of John chapter 1, verses 1. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Notice, John the Apostle is introducing Jesus, is introducing a life in the Spirit, is introducing a walk in the Spirit, and he says something. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, which means our introduction to God begins at the Word of God. For many it is easy to assume that walking in the Spirit begins with some kind of atmosphere, some kind of goose pimples, some kind of shaking, some kind of miracles. No, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Which means our introduction to this life in the Spirit is to get introduced to the Word of God. What does Matthew 4, 4 say? Man shall not live on bread alone, but by every single word that comes out of the mouth of God. Why? Our direction is in the word. Our security is in the word. The realm of the spirit requires laws and principles and protocols, and we can only know how to walk with God through his word. So, child of God, it's time for you to crank open that Bible and begin to study it and begin to read it and let the illumination of God and let the revelation of God and let the insights of the Spirit be poured into your soul. You know, there's a scripture in the book of Psalms. 
you know, um, David prays and says, Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. Imagine this. David is looking at the law, the word of God, and he's saying, Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. This man desired an intimate walk with God. This man desired to walk in the spirit. And he knew that its beginning is in the law of the Lord. No wonder. The Bible says this book of the law shall not depart of your mouth. It shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate upon it therein day and night. And you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. Child of God, it is inevitable for you and for me to begin rightly with the Lord, to begin a sound, to begin a profitable, to begin a very beneficial walk with the Lord in the Spirit, and it begins with the Word of God. Do not neglect the Word of God. Prove everything by the Word of God. Let the Word of God be your base. Let the word of God be your foundation. Jesus said that he that hears my words and does them, he it is that loves me. And he's likened unto a man that built his house on a rock. When you are built on the word of God, child of God, you're built on a rock and you have a sound walk in the spirit. Think about how easy it is to begin. Think about how exciting it is to begin. I know you and I, when we get into the Word of God, we get excited. I get excited every time I come into the Word of God just to share it here. Think about it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I preach myself happy already. Now, walking in the Spirit is something Jesus practiced. Because notice when he began his ministry, over there in Luke chapter 4 verse 18, the Bible says, And he found where it was written in the book of Isaiah. Notice this, even Jesus himself, Luke 4 18, go read it for yourself. And he found where it was written in the book of Isaiah. And there he began to preach. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach. What did he preach? What Isaiah had written. What was in the word. If Jesus walked in the word, you and I, must walk in the word of God. So it is a very important prerequisite for you and I to live our lives by what the word of God says. There is no beginning to walk in the spirit neglecting the word of God. It is part and parcel of your life. It is your security, child of God. You want to keep away the demons. You want to keep away the attacks. You want, to, you, you want to be strong in the day of weakness. You want to be consistent with God, child of God. It is the word of God. And God has given you and I his word for a posterity, for a longevity of walking with him in the realm of the spirit. So today, my desire was to come on here and just talk to you and just let you know that you begin your walk in the Spirit today and you can begin a sound, deep walk in the Spirit. And how do you know you're walking in the Spirit when you're walking in the Word? Because when you're walking in the Word, you're walking in the Lord and you're walking in the fullness of God. And child of God, the Bible says, by his word, we know he created every single thing by the power of his word. Hallelujah. The word of his power created every single thing. And you and I have the privilege to experience that same power, that same reality, when we submit and obey his words. I'll leave you with this. John 14, 15. He that loves me, obeys my commandments. You want to walk with the Lord. You want to walk in the Spirit. You want to love God. You want to know that you're, you're doing something that is amazing. You want to know that you're intimate with God. You go to the Word of God. 
Come on, enough of the books, enough of the videos, enough of the movies, enough of everything, social media that is pulling your attention. Get to the word of God if you want to be a man, a woman of deep spiritual relevance. Then it begins with opening your Bible and spending time with God in there. Child of God, I pray this has been a blessing to you and that you have been encouraged. This series is designed to help you walk with God with impact, impact your family, impact your community, fulfill the call of God in your life, get other people to start walking with the Lord and make sure that something happens around you, an awakening, a reformation, a revival, because God has called you as an agent of redemptive change. And it is time for you and I to be the light that God has called us in this world. So, let's crank open those Bibles and begin today. And the lesson today was, you walk in the Spirit by going to the Word of God first. Let the Word of God take first priority in your life. And the people said, Amen. And amen. God bless you.